Welcome back to On The Line With. It's season three. I'm glad that we made it to season three. I didn't think I'd make it past season one, but here we are. Uh, Chuck Lair closed out season two. Shout out Chuck Lair. So today we got a special guest. It's coming from the West Coast. We're talking on Skype right now. And I'm going to let him introduce himself. All I'm going to say is lions eat goats. Ha ha ha, lions eat goats. Real talk, leg. Uh, yo, I go by junk, and uh, I'm excited to get this interview off, man. Stay busy, been busy, you know. Salutes from the West Coast. Yeah, man, definitely, man. I'm, I'm out here in thank, Ottawa, so. Thank you for having me on the show, man. Appreciate you, bro. Man, I, I've always followed your music. I used to listen to Snack the Ripper a lot, too. So, like, I had a lot of, like, love for the West Coast artists, you know what I mean? Like, same with the East Coast artists, like Quake. Quake's crazy. You know? Yeah, he's dope. He's dope as fuck. But mm-hmm. let's get to you. So, you're, <laughs> how long have you been doing music now? Long time, bro. A good, solid, I mean, all my life, really, you know? My dad's a musician, so I, like, grew up just doing music, focusing on watching music being made just part of my fabric man so i've just been doing it forever to be honest since since i was born i've been doing it you know but professionally as a as an actual occupation when did you pick up a pen though like and start thinking i'm gonna write a rhyme and like when like, were you and when did when did that transition to like i'm gonna make this even bigger like 12 12 13 when i yeah, started I, writing writing raps at 12 13 yeah when i was rapping i started i started at 14 right so, so there you go yeah around there around that time yeah so like do you remember the first track you made uh, i think the first track i made was actually with my dad before i even knew english and like we did it in english it was called uh freddie's hand we ha- I had a group with my dad who's a musician um and i was like living in germany because like you know i was like born in germany moved to italy blah 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 long story short i know we probably get into that later or whatever but yeah first song i ever made was with my dad it was called freddie's hand i was like five years old or something we had a group called freddie's hand and it was oh the song was called nobody can touch us and we had a group called um freddie's hand it was like freddie krueger's hand yeah. <laughs> it was me and me and, my, me and my pops that was the first joint i, I like, did like actually uh, but the first like rap song i ever did was called dragonfly with uh this my first rap group that i was in called northern images from nelson british columbia so uh i don't know <laughs> if i caught that right earlier did you say that when you like you came from germany to canada and you didn't know english I didn't know English. No. I, so I, I so English English wasn't your first language. Like you're 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 pure Italian. You're speaking Italian. Uh, I'm 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 three quarters Italian, quarter German, but born in Germany, raised by an Italian. My 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 father's Italian. My mother's German Italian. I live back and forth between Italy and Germany. So Italian and German are my mother languages. Those are my native languages. And then uh, I then I started learning English when I moved to Canada with my mom. So yeah, English is like my third language. It's been my third language. Okay, that's interesting. Like that's interesting. No, I, I wonder if a lot of people know that. You think a lot of people know that? Um. I mean, I got joints where I rap in different languages and stuff, so I've, obviously I've seen that. But uh, yeah, and I mean, if you listen to my music, it's you know it's layered in there that I came over from and joints like Do or Die that I have with uh, Messiah. Like I, I talk about that from Germany to Italy, you know, blah blah blah, all the shit. So yeah, I do have songs where I mention it and talk about it. Um, but yeah, it's probably you know, it's not like the most common known thing but that's yeah. why we do these little interviews and what that's right? what I, that's what i'm saying bro the interviews get different stories man it don't matter sure. what, that's what i mean man. people are like i don't want to get into it there's too many people interviewing people yo you're gonna get different stories that i don't get so like Correct. reach you know reach for it no 100 percent. but yeah 100%. so you had that song dragonfly and you were in a group you said at that time yeah northern images and how long did Nor- northern images last well, it's like maybe a couple years or something like that, two, three years. I was, it was, I was a young kid. I was like 14, 15, 16. We had a group. Then I started another group with one of the dudes from the group called Depth, and the group was called Carpe Diem. You know, just your first little groups that you start out with. Just I hear cool, you. Cool edit pro, basements, mm. like down, whatever, just, it's, just fucking around. It's funny you say cool edit pro. We were just talking about that before I came on camera with my boys that are here. We were talking about cool edit pro because back in the day, that's what I used. <laughs> yeah, man. Cool edit 2.0, all that shit. Shit was Started easy off. to use, man. It was fairly easy to use. I never got to use it. 
I mean, I used it. I just recorded because my homie, it was his computer. So I'd have to go over to his crib and he would just like track me. So I, I never actually sat there because he was like kind of a control freak, I guess. <laughs> Looking <laughs> back on it now, but whatever it is. Shit. What it is. It's all good. Okay, so you start off making like the music with uh, that crew and then that ends. Did it end on like a... Uh... Oh, yeah. Bad, bad terms, bad blood? Or? No, no, no. No, I was just, that was in Nelson, BC. So I was like, that was a very, it's a very small town in BC. It's like 10, 15,000 people. So after doing hip hop nights and like just recording and just being out there and burning CDs and handing them out or whatever, doing all the opening slots I could in a small town like that. I was just like, I moved to Vancouver because I need to sign. I was like, yo, this ain't enough for me. I was really trying to pursue this shit. So I moved to Vancouver with an ex of mine and, uh, you know, got a job and just started entering the battle circuits and open mic nights and just, you know, Vancouver much bigger than where I was. So, and then, uh, yeah, just kept following that path, just trying to get into every door that I possibly could. And uh, I did, you know. So no other images after that ends. Do you go just on your solo mission or do you yeah. end up bumping to no. like another crew or No, I went I went to Vancouver, came solo, just had a couple homies that like, you know, they introduced me to a couple rappers and people that were doing the same thing. Um, but I just yeah, I just did my solo thing, just rap battling, open mics, just going by junk, doing my thing, meeting other rappers. Then I got into a couple little mini groups here and there. And then in twenty eleven I uh, was in the first King of the Dot battle in Vancouver, the first one ever. So that was kind of like historic, you know, the first time KOTD ventured yeah, off to the West. Just, West. You and, just answered my next question. I was going to yeah. ask because you were like back, same battle. And I was going to, I wonder if you're in the KOTD. I used to follow yeah. it a lot, but then I stopped. It's, it's, it's a crazy platform. Shout out to King of the Dot. But yeah. Shout out Organic with his, with his new like ghost drops. You got that. In Ottawa right now, you know, shout out to my guys at Secret Garden Wellington. They got it. They're the plug with it right now. For real. A little, a little pricey, but it's good. <laughs> good things cost sometimes, you know what I mean? A Benz ain't cheap, but it's fire, so it is what it is. I hate, man. Shout out to Organic, man. He's, he really he really brought, like, a company from the bottom right to fuck up. Like, he was starting in the alleyway spitting, and then they went to, like, the parks. Mm -hmm. Then they got little venues. And then they got full venues, and now they got pay-per-views. Like, yeah. uh, man, listen, like... No, no, shout out to King of the Dog again, yeah. for sure. Big, Absolutely. big time, man. Gully and them, too, you know? Like, all yeah. of them, like, you know, they all been... They all stuck by him. Bishop, Brigante. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, that's cool, man. You battled, like, how, how many battles did you think you went through? Did you do it, like, a big time, or...? Uh, no, nah, I did. I, I did like I did like six or seven in King of the Dog. My I don't know. It was like I have like four and two or some shit like that's my record. Did a did a two on two. But what I was trying to say is like um, you asked me if I was in any groups here in Vancouver. So I got it for did the first battle. And then in that battle, I battled this dude named Hungry, who, uh, you know, we were just like enemies or whatever, just rap battle enemies kind of sit. And then uh, but we ended up be becoming super like really good friends, almost best friends. And we made a group called Northwest Division that we pushed for 10 years till last year. And we actually just did our 10 year anniversary album. It's called Northwest yeah. Division. Three, four albums, mixtapes, worked with a lot of different artists, did a lot of um uh, big shows and shit so yeah, yeah you got you got some merch with that too you were you were promoting a couple of weeks back i think right uh, i don't know about a couple of weeks back probably like three four months back but um yeah northwest division 10 year anniversary gear we we made an album the 10 year anniversary album yeah it's all brand new albums like seven joints um dj burn one from atlanta producing on it and uh yeah, we just we made a bundle, we made a drop of all the gear. You can get it at my name is junk dot com. Uh, yeah. All the Northwest Division gear. But yeah, that that was the group that I um, was the only group that I was in when I moved to Vancouver. And I mean, I'm still in it. But we yeah, we we just celebrated ten years as a group the other day, and yeah. that all stemmed from a King of the Dot battle uh, ten ten years mm -hmm. ago in 20, 2011. So yeah, maybe you could send something for the artist wall and sign it. What's that? We got an artist wall starting up where we're putting up like uh -oh. everybody's stuff. If you want to put something up, let me know. Yeah, yeah, I'll have That'd to be come cool, through. Bro. I'll have to come through and hit it, you know, mm -hmm. in Ottawa. Yeah, definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you been to Ottawa a lot in your life? I've been to Ottawa like three, four times. Done some shows. Done some shows with Snack and Swisha T. It's my boy and um, my homie, uh, very good friend of mine. Aspects lives. Yeah, I've been to Ottawa a few times just to do shows. You know what yeah. I mean? Me and Aspects go way back to Broken Bridge way back in the day. Word. Like, yeah, like Aspects always been dope. Yeah, I respect them a lot. We got a song coming out real soon. Uh, oh yeah. Me, him, me, him, and this uh, and Dakota Bear. Um, 
It's gonna be a big song. We're working on it very heavily. It's it's, it's gonna be a big one. So you got a name you could drop? We don't have a name for that song yet. Fair but enough. we don't. But the song is done. We we're figuring out a name right now. But it's gonna be a big big song. We're putting a lot of energy in. Yeah. You know. Did you see um Jay Morris and Aspects new track? You should check it out. It's dope. Word up. Yeah. Aspects goes hard. I, I fuck with Aspects. We did a little tour out here. Um, did the Snack the Ripper like parking mm-hmm. lot tour like in the summer it was that was really cool we just pulled up and plugged into outlets and just rocked out did four or five shows five six shows or something like that in alberta it was fun to, that's the first time i got to know him so we hung out every day just eating mushrooms fucking having a good time <laughs> it was lit you worked with aspects how was it how was it working with aspects it was blessed man i mean we didn't work to we just played shows together and just you know performed live so that was beautiful guys uh, he's he's amazing Amazing artist. He's a human jukebox, man. He can play anything. It's dope because we're in the van, you know, in the Sprinter van, and he just pulls out his acoustic and just goes in for the yeah. entire duration of the trip. So it's like having your own jukebox. Cool. You don't even, you don't need a stereo when Aspects is around. <laughs> so 14-year-old writing, let's go to like, say you're 18, 19, like where were you at at that point? Just moved to Vancouver and started entering the, you know, the, like I said, the open mics and okay. uh, freestyle rap battles, winning. I won a lot, man. I won, I won a lot of freestyle competition everything i was winning everything every yeah. all the time every battle i won every thrown by different people i'd go to like different cities close by and win those as well and take little trophies home and get paper and shit just you know basically there was a battle called rent money uh hosted by emotions the og emotions out here in uh, vancouver i used to win all the time you know what i mean Word. i started getting known just doing that obviously it came up as a battle rapper freestyle battle mc came up doing that and then king of the dot came and you know, I started doing pretty well in that as well. It was a new thing. Started doing open mics and just being known as like a very good freestyle MC. And then after a while, I was just like, I wanted to dive into the music more. I just hone my craft first. Getting, you know what I mean? Getting some credibility to myself and just getting some eyes and a little bit of buzz in the city. Yeah. Just by, by doing that, you know what I mean? What better way to just like fucking win some competitions and get your name buzzing a bit. So I did that. And then yeah. I wanted to, you know, then I, I felt like I was already like, damn, dude, I don't want to be known as just battle MC or freestyle MC, which to this day, I'm still known as like a top freestyle MC, which is great. And I, I appreciate that. But like, I, I didn't want to only do that. You know what I mean? I didn't want to yeah. like only be that. So I just started really diving into the music, made this group Northwest Division and started experimenting with different styles and different sounds. And um, I'm still doing that to this day. You know what I mean? So your music is very relatable, like a t- it touches people. Yeah, like, word, bro. I try to do that. That's what I try to do with this show. You know what I mean? Like, I try to show the artists and I try to show the human. You know what I mean? Because yeah, it's not every day that your fans get to know, like, the human you. You know what I mean? So, like, sometimes it's, it's like, it makes them relate to you even more. You know what I mean? It's more. I just try to do shit that's, like, me, man. I And, and I'm, I'm a bit of everything. I'm not just one dimensional, you know? So, sometimes I say it's maybe more profound or, like, real. Whatever. I just do whatever I feel. You know what I mean? That's how I keep it real. So if, 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 if you do what you feel at the particular moment it can't be wrong you know what i mean yeah. you might not like it but it's it is who i am so take yeah. it as is but as the artist like as the artist if you like it like if that's it you like it you know what i mean you're gonna you're gonna do something with it it doesn't matter people are gonna not might not like it fuck it you do you know what i mean that's how i see it nowadays i don't rap yeah. no more and shit but like that's how i see it nowadays if i was you know what i mean like i should have been thinking this like like 12 years ago <laughs> but i mean shit happens but here we are so you start diving into the music more and you start writing did you when you were writing do you like coming out of the battle scene when you were writing did you feel like you kept writing like battle rhymes like definitely man definitely very good gra- i always had like a you right it's, it's hard it's hard but like i also had like a crazy like socio-political side always you know what i mean that's probably just from like traveling a lot as a kid living in different countries and cities so speaking different languages so i always saw the world a little bit different like i actually seen quite a bit of the world like before my young age like at a young age so i was like i always spoke on topics of like not just not just some rap shit like actually you know and i still do to this day like whatever injustices or political corruption or how governments are fucked i always had that kind of undertone in my music you know what i mean because that's how i came up and grew yeah. up so like i always spoke on that shit too so i focus more on that type of shit but then you start getting all crafty with it you know what i mean like oh i gotta 
gotta have the 15 syllable double entendre fucking polysyllabic rhyme scheme so then you started focusing on like the technical you know bat, rap battle like makes you really focus on the technical aspects especially when like king of the dots started coming in and all that shit so it's all about the writing and the syllables and how you can match shit so i was really focused in on that almost too much to a point you know what i mean but it did like give me the groundwork for being able to do it just so easy now and uh, i'm not trying to focus on 15 syllable multi-syllabic rhyme schemes anymore because like ain't nobody trying to hear that except for rappers that love rapper rappers you know what i mean and that's like yeah. there's no market for that i'm not interested in hearing how technical you can get that's why i don't fuck with eminem anymore because he, he's so technical but it's just like man what are you saying bro like i, I don't want to just hear technical excellence so i want to hear something profound or like something yeah. that can move something that can move me you know what i mean so that's like, I, I agree i agree with you but i do respect it i do respect the technical aspect i'm very technical still but like i've definitely learned to use that as my foundation but not let that define me because it's just not for everybody it's actually it's such a little niche that's like you can't if you're trying to really say some shit in your music and that's all you do is deliver it in a, in a technical manner you're gonna miss the mark you're not gonna reach as many people which is like if you really want to say something to try to like improve shit shit or like somebody's life try to say it in a manner that's digestible for everybody so i've really been like focused on doing that yeah so fast forward after like transitioning more into like writing music to make like songs and shit like that yeah, like make songs uh, man make songs. like the, what 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 year is that about that's like 2013 2014 yeah. now you know what okay. i mean really it, like it, it sounds it sounds about right because of the kotd being like out there and stuff they were moving around more around that but time but 20, 20 2011 was when i battled in king of the dot so yeah uh, uh 2011 i made that group yeah and then you know we started de- like, experimenting and shit and just like doing some chopper shit double time shit personal shit experimenting with like more trappier kind of like southern style trappier beats you know yeah. all that type shit so uh yeah yeah, man. So, okay, fast forward then, like, you've been making songs now. When did you get signed? Because you're in Stealth Bomb, right? Uh, I signed a Stealth Bomb in 2016 as okay. a solo artist because my homie was having a kid and, I don't know, I was just, like, more gun ho about the shit, you know what I mean? Always. I've always been, like, it's all or nothing. Homie was, like, yeah, he was having a kid and he was focused on, like, stacking paper and shit like that, so it wasn't his my homie hungry shout out to him we're still in a group and that's still my guy and household that's our team but uh we just had like a little bit of different ambition back then so i got signed i got signed as a I, my homie's like dude i can't tour that much i'm having a kid blah 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 fair enough no no fucking you know was no problem but i was like shit man i, I i'm not having a kid you know what i mean i want to pursue this shit so i went and made a solo album in 2016 and snack caught wind of it i mean he was always fucking with me but then snack caught wind that i was working on a solo album and he was putting together a, a new a little label independent label called stealth bomb and he was fucking signed me immediately and since then since he signed me then we put the album out under stealth bomb that was my first solo album it's called i am no one uh and that was 2016 and then he took me and i was his fucking second right hand man basically that's merc was still on stealth bomb then but then merc was starting to venture out and do his own shit yeah. away from stealth bomb and then yeah merc and snack took me on tour to europe i toured with onyx and snack and merc and fucking i did like three four european tours and from 2016 to 2018 it was crazy bro i've been to europe lots and made a lot of fans and just you know got in front of their fans and just made new fans and a lot of eyes on me and that was a blessed opportunity that you know helps me to this day i just definitely built myself a fan base that was international and just bigger so salutes to those dudes and um yeah and then i left stealth bomb in 2018 did my own just you know out of just some business um purely business just wanted to venture out fully independent not under any umbrella at all just you know as a paper thing business so you're so, so you're solo right now you're not signed i'll get to it and then um so i did uh then i did my audio heroin album actually i did I am no one. 2016, stupid and ugly with Stealth Bomb as well. In 2017, toured for two years, like I said. Then in 2018, okay. I dipped from Stealth Bomb, did an album just solo under Household, which is like my team and collective here. Um, Audio Heroin it was called. That album did really well. Booked all these shows myself. Started just doing everything as not just like in the shadow with Snack. You know what I mean? That was the thing I wanted to just like see what I can do as in my own independent entity, where I'm not like you know shouldering Snack all the time. Which is nothing wrong with that, but like at certain point you need to branch out and see what you can do 
as your as a as your own artist, you know, with, with no help. And so I did that, and then went well. I went beast mode for a while, and then 2019, I dropped three EPs together in pieces. One, two, and three. Kept touring, kept going crazy, and then 2020, uh, yeah, me and Snack started talking again about maybe joining forces again because I was just going so ham. He's like, God damn, bro, I'm thinking about making Stealth Bomb 2.0, a revamped, better version of it than before. Blah blah blah. So we've been talking, and then that was we were gonna do it and then fucking covid came and we we're like damn everything's fucked now but amidst that time me and stitch like we, we've been talking we made a we made a joint in like 2019 that dropped that was super hard um no ragu was called and then this is yeah that shit goes hard and then um that's on one of those eps together in pieces too actually but uh we we're like fuck it man a lot of people want us to keep making music together blah 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 long story short i'm like snack you need to sign stitch to the fucking label if you really want to revamp this shit and make it crazy he did and so in in 2020 when covid came we were just like working on this album blah 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 and then obviously we dropped it 2021 one year ago almost today we dropped it well the first single streets on fire which you're going to play on your show next on the interval um yeah and the rest is history but for that album me and Stitch signed to Stealth Bomb together. I re-signed because I was already with them, then I left, but we signed this album under Stealth Bomb. Um, yeah, so that album is a Stealth Bomb album, and, you know, we represent Stealth Bomb, obviously, but we also have our own individual uh, entities going on. He's got lots of shit. Stitch got a lot of shit going on. I got a lot of shit. He's got, like, Glenn True Poets and all that. Like. Exactly, exactly. He works with a lot of different artists, so it's just like, we're just moving in the independent lane, and, uh, you know, but yeah, that was, a st- that was a Stealth Bomb release. Obviously, I still rep Stealth Bomb, yeah. and uh, so, so does he, but it's like, I'm like a so I'm just venturing in the world, so I, I do little deals here and there, you know? know it depending on whatever works for me distribution or whatnot so yeah let's stay on like the like the stealth bomb talk just for like a little bit longer if you don't mind sure no, like, no, not at all, like when mercules was in it yeah like what what was it like i know towards ah. the end with him there is like tension with somebody in it i don't know the whole story so like i don't want to pry and get into it i just i just heard there was tension with somebody and that was the reason that like he kind of moved away from it mm-hmm. like how was it though when he was in it working with him like where you guys well like, me and Merck I've, I've been I've been fucking with Merck forever I watched Merck perform his first rap battle ever when he was still going under Merck mics here and shit so I, I've known Merck for a long time it's all good that's the homie yeah um, I got I got you know multiple songs with Merck since before he was fucking really popping and shit so yeah. uh but I got to I got to Stealth Bomb when he was kind of on his way out already. So okay. it was kind of it, it it was already happening. You know what I mean? I got to I got to Stealth Bomb when that shit was already ha- he was on his way out basically. Like I got there and a few months later he was gone. I did one tour with Merck in Europe with him. Just just me, just me and Merck and uh, fucking all over the place. That was super fun. Where in Europe? How? Where'd you guys go? All, all over, man. Spain, over. Germany, fucking Bulgaria, all over the place, man. Italy, you know what I mean? We tore it down. That was that was an amazing time. And then shortly after that, he dipped because he was already on his way out, though. You know what I mean? It's just it's what happens, bro. People fucking money, this that. It's rap yeah. shit. There's always it's like anything. Fucking bands have issues because this that whatever. You know, it doesn't matter because that's just life, yeah. bro. People, people, you 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 go to a construction site, you have a problem with the dude you work with every day because he's fucking stole your hammer or some shit you know what i mean it's just like it just trickles down into every industry it's just like that yeah. but it's all good and i'm happy for everybody but like yeah i i yeah. never had no issues with anybody so i don't know anything about that shit is all i know is just it is what it is and that's what happens so yeah all right do you still talk to merc on a regular or? i don't talk to him on a regular you know what i mean i stop he's the homie if i see him it's all if i see him we're kicking it but with covid it's been hard so i don't see many people to be honest but like yeah of course me and merc chat here and there you know you know what I mean? I mean, he's got a lot of people, I'm sure, that want to holler at him, whatever. But it's like, hey, when I see Merck, it's all gravy. That's it. It's like, yeah. I wouldn't say he's my fucking best friend or anything like that. But I got a mad love for Merck. And I know he yeah. loves, uh, you know, that, that love's reciprocal right back to me. So were you, were you shocked when he blew up the way he blew up? Nah, I wasn't shocked. It was, he came in at the right time when you two, I mean, Snack really was the fucking catalyst to all that shit, to be honest, because Snack, uh, tapped into uploading fucking videos to youtube when youtube was just a tutorial website you know what i mean like yeah. snack was one of the first rappers to to upload to youtube music videos so snack tapped into that and 
you know, then obviously it's just like anything. It's the trickle effect. People then started being on YouTube. And they noticed him quick because he was on there going hard, uploading, shooting his own videos all the time. He was, it's good timing. Snack then built some shit up with Stomp Down, blah, blah, blah. Years later, then he took Merc under his wing and, you know, helped Merc out and with image and style or whatever, and just, 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 just guiding him. You know what I mean? And then Merc took it to the next fucking level. Like Merc's really good with the internet, but he also came in right when YouTube was bubbling and he coasted off that STK Snack, uh, run that they were having on youtube where they were just bodying it right and then he, he coasted off that but he was prominent prolific did a lot of material got better all the time and he was like a bit obviously you see merc with his fucking shirt off with tattoos and a scar in his face it's a memorable character too so you know that played into his whole identity and everything and he was just in the right place at the right time and was also prepared so yeah, um, yeah he used youtube to his advantage and that trickled into facebook he was always emailing people and fucking writing them on facebook responding to everybody he was always like yeah. that dude that He's was a, very active so it's, someone, it didn't surprise me at all he tapped into a vein that was just like he was he was prepared for it for a vein that was perfect timing for him to like you know what i mean he was fucking just um had so much material all the time and content whatever it was car bars or songs or videos he was just ready man and and you know it was it's like being a 16 year old with a crazy dance and some fucking song on tiktok right now that takes off it's the same uh. type of thing it's the same fucking type of thing he was just in the right place like tiktok was youtube 15 years ago whatever or 10 12 years ago you know what i mean where it was just crazy and it just worked for him so it was right. It's timing, man. It's, it's good timing, but also being prepared. You know what I mean? It's not just timing. You got to be prepared, which he was. So respect. Definitely. So working with Snack, like what's what's that like? How Snack like as a as like Snack's, Snack's a man, man. Snack's a really good friend of mine. I'd, I'd say he's a yeah. very good friend of mine. Uh, yeah. Been working with Snack since yeah 2016. Working on music, passing ideas back and forth, bars, sharing lyrics, whatever. Fucking hit me up, yo. I need fucking four bars on this scheme. Boom, send it back to him. I'll send him a video. Video I did that I edited, or he'll send me one. Yo, what do you think of this? I'll add this, blah blah blah. So me and Snack are like that. We almost talk every couple days about just on some art shit, on some how's your kids shit, how's your wife shit. You know what I mean? He invites me over to the crib, go for a swim, or have a barbecue, whatever. So it's uh, no, me and Snack are very good friends, and um, yeah, and we we've, we've toured a lot. I've toured so much with Snack all over Canada, Western Canada, fucking Quebec, Toronto, Europe, so many countries. Flying with him to places, you know, getting fucking lit with Snack. What before we were sober. He's sober a few years now. I'm almost over seven months, but uh, congratulations. Yeah, man. Yeah, thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Oh, but yeah, Snack. Snack is great to work with, bro. He's got a lot of insight, yeah. and he know, and he's taught me how to navigate. All right, so you said you're good friends with Snack. You're really close, like yeah, man. very so close. So you must have like tons of music with him on releases. I'm assuming. Uh, we've pretty much released all the music we made, man. Like usually, yeah. when, we get, when we make a song, it comes out because it's just fire. So. But yeah, I got five, six joints with them out, you know what I mean? And then we got, we got some more things in the chamber percolating, coming out soon, I'm sure. Sometimes, I don't even know, we have so many songs, just period. Hey, yeah, songs, I got songs, fucking, I, I, get, I get lost in the sauce, bro. Yeah, and being in, like, a stealth bomb, do you feel more creative? Like, you could express yourself, like, more creatively? Like, has it given you, like, ha has it given you any different feeling, or? Nah, bro, I just do me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wouldn't I wouldn't go anywhere if I couldn't be me 100 percent. Self bomb doesn't change anything for me creatively. Mm -hmm. I do me 100 percent. And yeah. that's what self bomb all about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you and you work for what you get, basically. Yeah. So, and yeah. I wouldn't want different. I hope it wasn't a dumb question. I don't know. I th some people I find I've heard like they get into a label, they feel like they could be more creative now. And I'm like, well, like when you were independent, like what was the issue? But the thing is, self bomb is an indie label, so it's like yeah, for indie yeah. label, what to do? That would be fucking ludicrous, bro. So it's like, yeah, no, I'm no. So so with the revamp that you were talking about, like that happened with uh, Stealth Bomb, it was you, Snack, Stitch. Who else is a uh, part of it? Uh, Messiah, Penwork, um, Known was part of it. Uh, Nicole McKenzie and um, Young Sin. Okay. Did you end up working with all those artists, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I've been I've been working with all those artists already. Jacqueline, obviously, I've you know got songs with all those people. Young Sin's producing a few joints on my next record that I'm putting out. Um, yeah, pen work. We've we put out a joint, Aerial Assault Two, that came out with Young Sin too. Yeah, I work with everyone. I've been working with everyone, so there's a nice yeah. little cast of people working. You know. Are you the type that like want to unify like all the artists to be like creative with each other? 
I always unify all the, uh, so many artists, and the, not even just what, who I mentioned. There's Vancouver's rich and full. Of That's talent. what I mean. I mean in general, I work, all, all the artists. I work with so many people. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. If you go to the catalog, you can see how many artists I work with, bro. Like, yeah, it's it's wild. Right. No, I've seen your catalog. I know you work with a lot of people. It's just it's just for the listeners that who might not know I work you. And Vancouver, Corduroy Floyd. Hungry, Neeks up north. That's my brother. Uh, Ir Evan, Freelance Flint, Stevie Ross. I mean, the Merc, the Snack, uh, DJ Table, Flip Out, Imperative. Um, and it's crazy. And, yeah, I got like Brevner, uh, Tion Gibbs, and now mm-hmm. Dakota Aspects from over there. I mean, Swisha T, Ottawa, all over Canada. I mean, I got songs with Del mm-hmm. Funky, Sapien, Disaster, The Battle Rapper, Mocha mm-hmm. Only. When it comes to Ottawa artists, what other artists from Ottawa that you uh, mess with? Bender, Sharon. Oh, Sister. man. R.I.P. Bender, man. Yeah, of course. Bender is the greatest fucking battle rap writer of all time, man. Man. That was such a shock to me when that happened, man. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, that that shook the scene in the city, man. Of course it did. And my my homie is um uh, Osa is my boy, Lo Pesci. Um, uh, yeah, man. Just I've I've done I got music with I got music with Os. I got music I, with Bender. I, I used to be hip hop artist myself when I was making music. Bender heard a track that I made and he's like, Yo, let's let's loop the beat and let me jump on it and i was like all right let's do it but like i told him i was busy so like we had to do it a couple weeks those couple weeks went by and then boom i was like no way man like oh, come on Rough, man. you know like uh, and it's not it's not that i care about the track it's just like the shock that like you know i was supposed to work with them like this coming week and then like boom like it's just uh, man just shocking definitely shocking bro yeah legacy lives on bro and that mural they made on the tech wall was dope that was great it was there for a minute we got a crazy mural in vancouver bender too oh really yeah behind the red room where we do a lot of the uh, king of the dot battles here is there's a huge bender piece done by def three crazy muralist from vancouver yeah. well, like you said swiss of tea and ottawa sharon yeah. aspects uh i mean i fuck with belly but, like, that's not my homie, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. like, yeah, fuck a lot of Ottawa rap, bro. Ottawa's got fire rappers, man. They've been having fire rappers. So. Yeah, I'm glad that you actually say that because a lot of people don't usually, like, shout them out like that. A little bit more music. The Lions Eat Goat album, which went number one in the country, right? It did for five days, yeah. Five days, like, those five days, how did it feel like? felt really great bro felt it it just felt nice because covid was so fucked up that like it was nice to have something positive amidst the covid you know what i mean like yo we got a we did an album over the fucking internet you know what i mean like we weren't even together bro like he's sending me verses i'm sending him shit back blah 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 voice memos whatever facetimes so to put to, an album together over the internet and then have it go number one basically you know after it mixed and blah 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 he came out here and we shot videos for it blah 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 and that one little week that you were allowed to travel it back then or whatever, like last fucking two Novembers ago or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Avigo number one was just felt nice. You know what I mean? It felt like, oh, man, like that we really believed in the album still do. Was, I think it was a masterful uh, rap album um, done by two people that have only hung out one time before. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It was late, and then it went number one. So it was like we we worked really hard on the shit, and um, it was a real nice blessing amidst the fucking kind of you know shit was, your time for everybody. So it was a great album, man. It was fantastic. Thank you, Thank you man. But working with Stitch, like you said, it was like all online mostly and stuff. He came yeah. out, shot the videos, and you kicked it with them like once. You said, "What's your like opinion on him as like a person and as an artist?" Like he, he's like he's a fucking funny guy to me, man. I don't know, he kills me. He's my brother, bro. That's my brother. We hung he, out like that's my brother. That's that's my brother. You know what I mean? Yeah. Amazing human being, fucking hilarious human being. Loyal, funny as dude. One of the most talented MCs I've ever met. So it's my guy. That's my fucking guy. He, you're right about being loyal. He stays solid. Do you remember the first Stitch song you heard? Nah, I was just seeing him on like Instagram reels and shit, and like winning the T ciphers and shit. Just, He's still a champion. Cause we were supposed to battle in a two on two, me hungry versus him in Payday in Calgary, but they didn't fucking um they didn't show up. And then uh yeah, that's where I heard of him first, right? That name. 
then years later to in 2019 early 2019 i'm just seeing him on like instagram and shit rapping his fucking heart out i was like yo i hit him up i'm like yo bro like i remember your name like we were supposed to battle years ago in a two-on-two and ah we laughed oh what the fuck blah 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 and i was like yo your shit's crazy i was just giving him love i was like i've just been watching i was like oh let me see i remember this name let's see what this guy's up to and i checked it out and he was fucking going insane and i was like yeah props and then it was he's just like yo i see what you're doing too blah 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 and one thing led to another and then we made no ragu real quick and that became like a canadian banger track that year but one of the hardest canadian rap cut that year and then um here we are, Lion's Ego, it's number one album. A couple years later, signed a stealth bomb, blah, 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 all that. If COVID wasn't a thing, we would have fucking tore that album, which we are about to actually announce pretty soon in some places that you can tour. Don't want to say too much on it right now just because things change every two minutes. Don't want to get people's hopes up, but we're working on the fucking tour right now. So Yeah. Do you think, like, just just a question about it, if you, if you guys can, are you thinking about coming to Ottawa? Well, the thing is, Ontario is super fucked right now. So that yeah. would have to be like, we're probably going to do leg one and leg two because leg one is going to be the areas we can go without like, I don't want to be doing, I don't want to do shows where it's 50% capacity and everyone has to wear a mask sitting down. That ain't it, bro. Like, I, I'd rather not do it. And also, we don't make as much money if we can only have fucking 50 people in. Neither does the staff. Neither does the establishment. It's just bad for business. So we're going to hit up, obviously, Alberta, Saskatchewan. Those joints are going to get us. But the thing is, things are easing up a bit here and there. Provinces are doing this, blah, blah, blah. So who knows, man? Maybe something is open more in other provinces. Then we'll add dates right away or we'll fucking book the second leg. Obviously, we, yes, if the if the country was open normally, we would do Vancouver to fucking PEI. You know what I mean? But it's it's very hard to move around. Like, it costs money to fly to places, this, that. You got to book DJs, all this shit. It costs money to throw a show. So if we can only make half the money right away, it's not a good investment for yourself. So it's a, it's a logistics and finance thing, too. You know what I mean? We can't just do shows for, out of pocket and lose money every night. You know what I mean? And it's also not right. Like, we're try, our shit's going to be hype as fuck. We're not trying to have people sitting at tables with masks on i want people getting lit and just getting rowdy you know what i mean so yeah definitely it's, it's crazy the times we're living in but we're just trying to we're trying to make you know we're trying to we're trying to do the art a we need to make money you know what i mean because we're artists and that's what we do b we want to have the people have a good time like you're not having a good time sitting down at a table with a mask on bro with 50 percent in the building i've done a couple shows like that you, you're right it's like going to a movie theater and only seeing a four a fourth of the fucking screen you know what like, i mean it's like why am i sitting yeah. in this theater if i can only see a quarter of the screen like it, it's it's yeah. just not it bro like it is weird it's not the same experience we want to i want to i don't want to fucking do shit just because i'm forced to do it that way like I want to deliver a full experience, you know what I mean? It's it's an experience going to a show. I don't want to, and it, rap's already so fucking stigmatized. Like, oh, it's just beats and a mic. Like, so much more. See, no one's getting turned, and everyone has to sit. And you're just sitting there on a stage with a mic. Like, it's just fucking boring, bro. I don't want to see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to be part of it. It's, it's it's not a good look. Yeah. Back to like the Lions Eat Goat album. What's what's the story behind the title? Um, we were just like. I came up with it one day. We were just like spitballing, brainstorming ideas. Now it's just like, we're always on the same wavelength, me and him. We were just like, yo, man, like, what about like, I think we had a conversation about being sick of fucking hearing people be called goats. This guy's the goat. That's just, This guy's a goat. Go, 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 goat. Everything is a goat. Fuck these goats. We're lions. Lions eat goats. We're going to fucking, you know what I mean? Fuck these goats, bro. Like, we're not. We're not. Everyone's a goat. Every fucking everything is a goat. This is goat. All oh, this is the food is the goat. This is goat. This is the best goat. This is the singer. This guy's the goat. Like man, fuck that. You guys are a bunch of goats. Goats get killed. We're lions. You know what I mean? It was kind of like a joke thing, but then it was like, yo, that's actually super hard. Like we was run with it, and we did. Here we are, and we had the number one album. So now it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. When you look at that project, when you look back at it. Uh, did you think it was going to do the numbers it did to get there? Like, or, or were you just, what were you expecting? What were you expecting? Like yourself? I just expected for, I, I just, like, it was a calculated move. It was like West coast. He's the East coast version of me. And I'm the, he's like me in the East and I'm like him or vice versa. Sorry. He's like, you know, I'm like him in the West and he's like me in the East. So it was like bridging. So like we're both buzzing, but not to the level of like whatever some other artists. So it was like a calculated move to be like bridge the gap and just like connect his fucking buzz with mine and vice versa. 
So, and then, you know, it was just like a bar fest, but also not just bars. Like if you listen to the album, it's not just fucking, obviously we have bars, you know, obviously, but it's like, there's songs on there too. There's messages, there's meaning, there's concepts, there's melodies. There's like, you know what I mean? There's some, some actual more than just writing a hot 16 with some punches, which is just light work for us. So it was just joining forces as two dope lyricists that are buzzing you know, uh, respectively on their coasts and putting, bridging that together and just making something more united, bringing two fronts to their kind of thing. It was like... You made yeah, something incredible, bro. Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought so. I thought, I mean, well, as we were making it, we're like, damn, bro, some of these songs are nuts. And it just kept growing and growing and growing. First, it was going to be an EP. And then Snack's like, nah, you guys got to make this an album. Like, I think these songs are crazy. I think you should add more. And he was right, so... um yeah, we, we, we turned it into a record, a whole album, and fuck the rest is history, bro. But we did feel really strong and confident about it while we are making it. Cause they, I think he, he's so dope. He's one of the dopest rappers I've ever worked with, right? So, And he says that about me. So, I mean, we've had many conversations like this. It was just like, it was like a competitive shit where it's like, man, I got to, oh, I'd hear his verse. Or he hear my verse and he's like, well, I got to outdo him. Vice versa, back and forth. That only brought the bar up even higher. You know what I mean? It was like, yo, we're just trying to outdo our, ourselves. It's friendly competition. It's friendly competition. And, and it just turned into like, it just turned into a fire album that way. Because we're like, yo, none, there's not one point of the album that is like weak. Like, oh, I don't know about this. But there is none of that. It's everything yeah. is 10, 10. No, nothing, all feels like, nothing feels like a filler track. You know what I mean? It's, every song is like. Is gonna like hit you in some way, you know what I mean? We don't do filler. No man, no filler shit. I know it's a definitely but, an album that's gonna be remembered by a lot of people in Canada. For sure, I'd like I'd say this: it's an underground staple album in Canada. You know what I mean? And it's like it's only been out for almost February 26th is actually the one year anniversary. But like in five, ten years, it's gonna be like that was incredible what they did. You know, looking back on it, I know this for a fact. Yeah. Definitely. This song here called Streets on Fire by myself and Young Stitch off the Lionsy Goats album produced by Alja, uh, mixed by Jamie Q's. It was the first single off of Lionsy Goats. Uh, it's almost a one year anniversary. So, yeah, run that up. One of the my I think it's my favorite song off the album. It's a very powerful song. It is. Why do they choose to ignore us? Italian, they tried to deport us. Crossing the borders without any papers in hand. Just a dream that we couldn't afford, but we waited outside in the car. Stand with my brothers, the government trying to control us. All of these figures, they worship a racist. We knocking down all of the statues before us. What do you claim is important and what is a lie? I'm vying to find what the meaning of life is. Tell me we different, but preaching just like us. Swear that this feeling is priceless. I put my dreams in a vice grip. This is what life is. We should be learning together. And I come from a planet that's filled up with different races and Try to determine who's better BLM all of my sweater I'm fighting for Regis I'm fighting for George Maybe I'm white But I'll fight for the right To your people With blood on my knife And my sword Christopher called it explored All he was doing Was claiming the land That belonged to the Lord Raping and pillaging Villages filled up With natives Who offered this help From abroad This ain't the arrogance That I want in my lifeline I'm not comparing To what you see In your lifetime This is why they bury In any truth that we might find This for anybody That think that Jesus A white guy Watch me as I ride In the streets Molotov cocktails Flying at police Don't tell Tell me what I'm fighting for in peace when I'm out here staying in the eyes of the beast, man. That's some real shit. I remember when I was seven years old and my mom was throwing rocks and Molotov cocktails at motherfucking police vans and neo-Nazis rioting in the streets in Berlin, man. That's the type of shit I grew up with. Real facts. Look it up. Let's go. You can trace me to ancient Sumerians. They're running out of patience and places to bury us. Self-separate you whose hatred is various. They try to say this. You threw shade on my character. We need more than change in America. We can't just pray for a miracle. Can't. Screaming gang, gang, yeah, I'm hearing you. But what the fuck you say to air raids in the Syria? The fuck we say to First Nation Americans what? Turks take everything to race and their heritage What, what we gon' say to these banks, y'all terrorists I'm the red bank, see I'm painting a narrative I don't do astrology But I do think we need age of Aquarius Look it up, there's some real shit Type it in, conversations curing up I've been screaming, fuck these pages and acronyms Not for no reason, my family been anarchist They fit that I made was anti-establishment Cause I'm sick of this shit, actually staff shit it's like the activist Kaepernick I was raised a Catholic Anglican Using this platform, a white rapper cancel him 
science first religion as of the Nazareth. I'm a product of the underground punk scene. Mainstream media in it, I'm never trusting. Me. Egalitarianism should not be luxury. We need that shit in the system in every country. Shit, watch my mom ride in the street. Monotop cocktails fired at police. And tell me what I ain't fighting for is peace. It was fighting 93 of a sudden with the lines were sheet. Yeah. These are people who live in public housing. Let's talk a little quick about mental health. to talk about that, so let's get it in. So, have you been dealing with something, like, personally or secondhand, like... And I don't really want to talk about other people's business, but I'll just, like, you know, not name them or whatever. I've no, no, of course. Uh, all good. I got a family member um, that's really been going through it right now, you know? Uh, and, um... It's it's pretty it, it it affects the whole family, man. It I'm sober, you know. This is one of the reasons why I'm staying sober. Like I've been obviously I've done drugs my whole life since I was a young kid. Blah blah blah. Everyone's got that story, but really been going in hard, you know. Twenty plus years of just partying hard and just consuming substances that are no good for you. So I'm sober now and I'm not turning back. I'm not looking back. Mm. I have no anything or desire. But uh, I want to. I feel like and you know I got I got a family member. I got a lot of family. I got several family members that are having some real problems, mental health problems, and uh, I feel like being there for them is is my drug now. Like I've I've been through it myself, and just being available, being available is the key, bro. Being available for them, just like being present. Do you find it could be hard sometimes though? Absolutely, very hard because it's like, hard to see them in that condition, and then it's also hard to be the fucking you know the happiness or like the voice of reason for them all the time when it's like yo yeah. sometimes i'm having a bad day or i have a fucking bad week and it's like and then this person hits me up with like i'm i want to kill myself type of shit and then you're like yeah like you know you're having a bad week and then someone you love and your family hits you up with I, I, or they literally try to commit suicide several times and you're just like fuck and, and you got to be strong for them so you got to put your shit aside it's hard you you you've had like suicide attempts in your family oh yeah man yeah. so that's that's traumatic for you so like was it when you were younger or like your age it's, now you know what i've had a lot of traumatic shit happen in in regards to people trying trying to kill themselves unintentionally ODing, um seeing friends od yeah People dying, bro. Mothers crying. People dying, mothers crying. You know what I mean? Literally, it's, I've seen yeah. all that shit, so, but it hits differently when it's like family members, bro. When it's a family member who's sure. down, they're going through these things, it's very difficult because they're they're not even a being young. You're not aware of the world fully yet. You know what I mean? I mean, not and no one is really, but when you're young, it's even more so. And social media and all this shit is like it's so much extra added on pressure. It definitely you know, adds some mental health issues. All I can do is just offer my advice and be present for these people and what, what is what I'm doing and lead by example. Hence, the, I'm on a new diet. I'm like super disciplined with this diet. I'm focusing on working out, being fit and just being sober. So all these things, there's like there's not much you can do other than like just lead by example and hear people out and be present for them. So but I've been dealing with this shit like every day, bro. Right now, it's like it's literally what my I, life is about right now. Dealing so with my man, problems. I deal with my own diagnosis, but I got I have I got a family member who has it r- real bad, too. And she she don't she don't believe that she have it. So it's even harder. Okay. It gets stressful. You know, I start clashing. Like, so I, I, it feels like you can relate. So like I see that. Yeah. That's that, that's dope. And it's, it's cool. Like this is what I mean when I do the show. Like people relate to shit. Like I'm relating yeah. to you a little bit right now. Obviously, I, I feel you. someone's going to relate to, like, to I, us. Real shit. You know what's fucked up, man? Years ago, you know, when I heard this word anxiety, oh, I'm, I have anxiety. Man, that doesn't even exist. That was me. That doesn't exist. Pfft, anxiety. That's for, you know, that's for pussies. That was my attitude. Ah, anxiety. And, and I really believe that. Yeah, I was young and stupid, whatever, right? And then then you really get hit with this shit and you're like, what is this shit? 
well, it's fucking anxiety. And then I'm like, damn, I was so ignorant to the fact. It's like, it's really a thing. Then once that, once you start, it's so sad that in this world to like believe something that has to happen to you. You know what I mean? It's crazy. But anyways, yeah. I started getting crazy anxiety. And then I was like, whoa, turn my whole world upside down, bro. And it's like, then I really started being like, well, okay, really paying attention and listening to people differently and just like being there. I mean, that's also part of like growing up. So I was saying, like, this is me, young, early 20s, it's so oh, anxiety. I didn't believe in that shit. Yeah. Then it hit, I got it myself, and then I really started, like, maybe understanding and listening more. It's a real thing. Like, yeah. right? it's all, you know, and that's just, that's just. Man, that's, that. like, I, like, when it comes to anxiety and shit, and I was making music, and my, uh, my life just turned upside down, and I just deleted, like, my whole catalog, and I ended up with just, like, a few unreleased tracks that I found in my email. And, like, everything else is gone. Like, it's just completely gone. And I feel so stupid about it because, like, I had a lot of work that, like, like I enjoyed, you know what I mean? But that anxiety fucked me up. And, like, my diagnosis of being bipolar and shit, that didn't help. It added to it. So, like, like I said, dealing with that, like, type of thing, like you said, like, with the family member, it is hard. It's definitely hard. Like, people listening right now who, like, relate or, like, having the same situation, what advice do you ha- have you could offer, do you think? Just just reach out to somebody that is willing to listen to you, you know, and, and hear them and, and, let, and talk to them. Let it all out. Vent to this person that looks, seems to be someone that way. If someone's saying, I'm here for you. Don't just be like, oh, thanks, and that's it. Don't just, like, discredit it. Like, use that person and fucking let that person be there for you. Like, if someone's telling you that, then let them be there for you. You know what I mean? Hey, first of all, get it out, communicate, breathe, and and just breathe. Just try to to breathe and just shit passes. You know what I mean? Also, like, things seem like it's permanent, but it's not. So it's like things do pass. So just try to breathe and communicate. You know what I mean? And go to therapy. This is is, our country offers free therapy for people. You know what I mean? Go go get to therapy if it, but really communication is key and breathe you know what i mean i know that seems trivial but it's like <laughs> that's it, some real it, sh- it works for the anxiety when you get it man if you start breathing it works breathe man breathe yeah. quickly like you say you're sober now like what were you fighting what were you dealing with i don't want to even get into that shit just demons bro i mean you go through shit in life blah 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 traumatic experiences everybody has them yeah everybody differently but i had my demons and i was just like doing things i shouldn't be doing you know, popping a lot of pills and just like drinking it leads you to nowhere man so did you do a cold turkey or did you go to a rehab center bro i i went cold turkey bro i did the same thing with my my addiction man it wasn't easy but those withdrawals were a motherfucker man withdrawals are a bitch yeah definitely i know you only have a little bit of time so i'm gonna just say thank you for coming on the show giving me the opportunity to talk to you i appreciate you having me on the show and talking to you about some real stuff i try to make it as raw as possible you know i don't try to pry i just try to get into it like i said you don't want to talk about it just skip the question yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like you know, no. to be honest you'll hear it on my new album you'll hear it all on my new album I, a lot of I, it is on my new album that's awesome bro but definitely i appreciate you coming on the show i appreciate you being open and honest talking about your music the journey your music thanks. journey was a great story i loved it thanks man I want to thank all the listeners and new listeners who might be on the on the show, and I appreciate you coming on. And if you're listening, a couple of weeks we'll have a new episode. This is the season premiere of season three. We got junk. Sounds funny when we say that. We got junk. But... Audio hair, baby. My music gets you hooked. Yeah, bro, your music is amazing, and I appreciate you coming on and talking with me and giving me the opportunity. I was just a random stranger who popped out of nowhere. It's all Gucci, bro. Much but, love. You know, I try to. Never work with as many people as possible and i'm glad that i got you it's people like you artists like you with significant names in canada and you are a significant name in canada so you, i'm gonna say that people are gonna see you now as the artist that they already love but they're gonna see that you also have like a side that not normally you would talk about it's not like a radio yeah. interview but you kept it real. I appreciate it again. All the new listeners, thanks for coming in. Thanks for listening. Make sure you check out Junk Music on Spotify. Check out Lions Eat Goats. Try to get it to number one again. That'd be cool. This song is another very powerful song. It was the only solo song I did in 2020. Uh, it's the only solo song that I released in 2020, I should say. It's called What's Wrong, What's Right, produced by my guy Bobby Clark. Um, it's a very, very strong song. Uh, both of these songs have very 
strong political messages, but I think it's fitting in the era that we're in right now. So run those up. Thanks for having me on the show. Much love to everybody. Thanks, everybody who's listening. I'm your host, Dan Lee. Let's- bomb. Peace out, bro. Much love. Yeah. Let's connect when you're in Ottawa. Let's get it. Peace. <laughs> First off, I would say we have little choice in the matter uh, of the fact that there is a low-level technical civilization in this part of the galaxy, because television programs uh, get out at the speed of light. What's wrong? What's right? Get screens, get likes, chase green, red lights, hate speech, and like, fuck me, fuck you. You don't trust me, I don't trust you. You above me, I'm above you. People don't kill people, guns do. Fuck a GoFundMe page, shut the fuck up in rage. You don't see color strange, ask any brother what he thinks, I'm fucking way. Burning sage does nothing while they pulling up in tanks. Cowards like me chanting for justice with a covered face. Can I say this? Can I say that? I'm white, I ain't black. You gonna love this? You gonna hate that? Sorry for the past that I can't take back Every bar I'm writing I put my heart behind it Start a riot How can R be quiet You're doing a piece for pretending you do it for tweeting and trending I feel like I'm in a movie Ain't the one ever gonna be seeing the ending Fuck it, I'm eating at Wendy's Go ahead and follow the leave me an Emmy Fuck Trump, love Trump Fuck cops, love cops Kill ops, pill pops What they really want Red, blue, blue, red You said this, now you dead what they really want Don't let them divide and conquer Don't let your mind get locked up Open your third eye My and dark desire Wask, I do things my way Doggy, I'm Sinatra I'm gonna get hate for this Hate God, hate atheists Hate y'all, hate Satanists Do Muslim people really hate racists Pigs more than me You've been partying more With my people During this quarantine And doors closer than two feet Like <coughs> Over COVID-19 I don't lose sleep You sheep Isn't shit in the streets You moving bricks in the streets Ain't shit compared to police Moving bricks in the streets Middle finger to peace This isn't a dream We value life less than algorithms And streams Literally Fuck kill the pig But I breathe Breathe, breathe What I was trying to breathe. get across Was uh, The notion That the school systems uh, It seems to me Have a uh, a uh, attitude of discouragement of asking fundamental questions if uh, if a five or six year old uh, asks why uh, the moon is round or why grass is green the usual adult answer at least in my experience is to discourage the child say what uh, what shape did you expect the moon to be square or what color did you expect the grass to be blue uh, instead of saying that uh, those are interesting questions let's try to find out the answer or maybe nobody knows the answer and uh, and when you grow up you'll be able to discover the answer it would be very healthy for the human species if uh, there were less discouragement